and that girls are moving across the country without apartments or plans to be on this team, which they may not even make it. Because mental warfare is real, y'all. Intimidation on the job is real. To make you feel like you have to constantly audition for the job you have already and the nepotism that is rampant in that organization is going to keep us here in Thunderstruck for the next 50 darn years. What's good, love muffins? It's Latrice Kelly. Welcome to this channel or welcome back if you're day one. When I tell you that this docuseries needs to be studied in an organizational behavior or management class, that HR professionals can have a field day with what we learn watching America's Sweethearts, Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders series on Netflix, it was a lot. But as a former girl who suited up in blue and white as well, that it was a nostalgic roller coaster ride. I enjoyed the performances. I enjoyed learning about the girls and the ladies that make up the illustrious Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders organization. That they are a spectacular group of women. They are an impressive group of women. It made me appreciate the sport and the athleticism of cheerleading, which I knew that already because, again, I've done this in the past. I was a pom pom girl, to be clear which we're the halftime, but kudos to all the ladies. Justice for Anisha though. And because we're gonna talk about this in terms of social issues and the takeaways of this, pay these girls, pay them. Y'all are wrong for not paying them adequately for all the abuse that they have to put up with, not just to their bodies, in terms of the physical ailments that they go through, the surgeries, in order to do these impressive jump splits. These Darth Karens are very scary, intimidating, as many of the ladies have pointed out during the series, that they are scared of them. We can work together. You can be my boss or supervisor, but I'm not scared of you. Even if you get mad, even if you yes, get offended. Ma so what you gonna do? Because I guarantee you, you can't beat me up. <laughs> but we gotta talk about how body image fits into this and how women uphold sexism, misogyny, and all the things. And that the corporate greed and capitalism of those cowboys organization and Jerry Jones and the nepotism that is rampant in that organization is going to keep us here in Thunderstruck for the next 50 darn years. If you have no interest in watching America's Sweethearts Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders on Netflix, I'm going to give you the quick brass text of what it's about. It is essentially a docuseries. It's about seven episodes surrounding the legend, the iconic nature that is the Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders, which is an athletic group within another athletic group. These women are trained athletes. They're not just dancers and accoutrements. They are performers who are hired to keep the game going, keep the crowd energetic and pumped up before, during the football games. For the Dallas Cowboys, this series follows the audition process, which is online first, in which the leaders of the Cowboys cheerleaders, which are Kelly and Judy, review these tapes, look at the women, their potential, see their dance package, look at their resume of experience, decide if they are good enough to come in person and audition in front of them. So these ladies are all anywhere from ages like 18 up to like college age. I believe Anisha was 31. They have a variety of ages that could potentially be on the team. Here's the gag. The people who are already on the team and have auditioned previously have to audition for subsequent years. You are not automatically rolled over into the next season. You have to audition for your spot, including returning their uniform. Is it clean to you? I can't see. What part thing went clean to you? The vest? Wow, I'm glad we're doing this. <laughs> yeah. So this is three years dingy, right? Second. Two, two years dingy. Mm -hmm. Will y'all turn it? Which has been custom fit for them. Return it to make them earn it back. Because mental warfare is real, y'all. Intimidation on the job is real. To make you feel like you have to constantly audition for the job you have already is insane. But this, this is what it is. The ladies sign up for it. They go in with all eyes open and aware of what they're going to have to do to make it back onto the team. So you got the newbies and you got the vets. So they sign up. 
they do the online thing first. At the end of the whole process, they should have 36 firmly signed new ladies that make up the organization. The cheerleaders organization is headed up by two former Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, uh, Kelly and Judy. These ladies, ironically enough, only had one season, but I guess their legacy and their impact lasted long enough that they maintained and got full-time jobs out of it. Imagine that. So now they are in charge of recruiting auditioning and looking for the elusive it factor it's kind of untoward to me that they kept saying they don't have a specific dance style their known stamp of what they do to me it's a lot of 80s hair flips it's giving very much white snake tawny katane choreography it's not jazz it's not hip-hop it's not even modern. It's just like some mishmash or whatever. And they say it by their own admission, getting onto the team is like 50% of it is dance ability. The rest of it is personality and giving us the showmanship factor, darling. For me, the other thing to be appealing is the nepotism. Because baby, that pipeline from my mama was a cheerleader to I'm now auditioning is a straight line. And they can't tell me that that's not an impact, that that's not considered, even though some girls have to be audition a second time as a cowgirls cheerleader cheerleader are they called cowgirls whatever they have up to five years potentially so we meet all the girls during the audition process and the storylines that the girls give are very much heartwarming thoughtful sad introspective it's a lot of stuff about being in this process which is very intense for them and they feel like this is very much their life These ladies are so-called brand ambassadors they are called to do USO tours. They go and visit nursing homes and hospitals. These girls do charity work. The ladies are also tasked with teaching cheerleading clinics and camp. And this is on top of these girls already have full-time jobs, a lot of them. Anisha is an orthodontist. One of the girls is a, a nurse that does trach care, finishing college or still in college while they're doing this. So on top of this, which is also considered a part-time gig job, which mm, they plan fast and loose with that being a part-time job because the way that they're expected to go on trips and travel as a team and that you have obligations outside of the football game. So they're not paying these ladies in a very nice structured way. I really want to know what their medical benefits package looks like especially since a lot of them are getting hurt because of the tricks and things they do when the ladies sign on to be dallas cowboy cheerleaders your body your face your image is marketed for years and years and decades to come the fact that they kept playing back that old beautiful bean footage 70s cowgirls the icons themselves who actually started this whole thing and that that's keeping the, the wheels turning they're always going to have the machine that is this organization because not only is the present girls part of it but it's also like the alumni network is just as important because it keeps the girls indoctrinated within the culture that's what i felt when i kept seeing the alumni getting roped back in for events they let them perform at one of the games the alumni network is also part of the behemoth that is marketing that you want this lifestyle you want this culture you want to be remembered as this that this is your legacy. The way that that girl was assaulted and they were just pretty much summarily like, oh, well, the show goes on, tells you everything you need to know about corporate behavior. Because at the end of the day, it's profits over people. You could have gotten hurt at the job. You could have fallen down, broke your leg or whatever. But what did you do to cause? Oh, the show must go on. We have this to do. This project is coming up. The fact that that one girl, her dad died and then she's out there signing during the national anthem, she says she made that choice, but we all know what's driving the choice. These people at the organization level, the management level who are running it, Jerry Jones's quote on loyalty, it gave me the instant heebie-jeebie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We didn't forget this happened either. Because we already know what he represents as far as the brand and the leadership and the corporate nature of this organization being the most moneyed NFL league that there is, the marketing, the push, the power that they have, you don't go up against that. And the fact that 
the Nepo baby pipeline within there is going to, again, it's going to ensure that these girls continue to take what they take to be a part of this organization because of tradition. You should not be making a Chick-fil-A salary when you're going to have hip replacement surgery in about four to five years when you're done with your career. I don't know if this is a Texas thing or specific to the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, but the yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma'am. I get it that you should have a professional distance from the person you're working for. But the age dynamic is why it kind of crushed me that I didn't feel good about the girls having to address Kelly and Judy and all the other authority figures, Charlotte Jones. But I also want to talk about this idea of like during the audition process, how we instantly saw the numbers whittling down and specifically getting rid of the browner girls right at the beginning because they probably have a quota to make. We can't have too many natural hair <laughs> cheerleaders up there like the girls represented for the 4C hair. Um, that was very much painfully obvious when they started to make the chops. And I was just like, well, here we go. But again, tradition. For me, the tradition sits in not just the aesthetic, the look. Everybody has to be like similar heights. I felt so bad for that girl who was a little bit shorter than everybody else. She can't make herself taller. When you look at the color of the uniforms and the, the stockings, not all neutrals look the same. They don't want it to skew too dark down the color wheel. We need it to be a little bit of mocha here, light here, tan here, nude color here. That's very much deliberate. But again, these women are holding up the standard when they could probably push against that. I like the NBA cheerleaders a little more because we don't just see tight booty shorts all the time. The girls are wearing warm-up suits and pants and leggings. It's other stuff that they can wear besides that little outfit that leaves nothing to the imagination during a uniform fitting. I was so saddened by that because the girls are like having to hold their stomach in, tuck your, tuck your, your chest back. People are asking about, are your, you know, melons real? Huh? Women doing it to women. It will always be a no for me that we could step up the standard. We can change it, especially if we are in a position of influence or authority to make it different saying things like petite and portionate. Is this your normal maintainable weight? Tiny hiney. It's giving negative body image. It's giving body shaming. I'm just like, how do these ladies sleep at night that you sit up here and intimidate these girls to the point that they are crying at the end of audition processes, that they need to be consoled. They need somebody to walk with them to their car and hug it out with them. It is a harsh work environment, but these girls have willingly signed up for it because of some alleged prestige that comes with it. You know, they have a non-fraternization policy, which I think is odd because adults should be able to date who they want to date. And I get it that, you know, the politic of, you know, harassment can definitely be a part of the workplace. But I feel like if they're consenting adults, then what's the problem? At least it would give some equity in a situation if these people potentially get married because you got these girls out here working for peanuts and hustling across the 100 yards of a football field just for the lights and the glitter and a fantastical notion of reliving your glory days, Kelly and Judy. I really feel like this is for y'all. Y'all are using Thunderstruck and that outdated ass ACDC song. You all want to relive the glory days of when you all were hair band groupie girls. I was very sad that they only had like two Barbies to pick from. Are you kidding me? They make Barbies in every height and size now and shade. You all should have more than two colors. Justice for them redheads too. Like Charlie, you, you deserve to have representation. I felt bad for the girls in their loneliness and isolation. They're moving to Texas and not knowing if they're going to make it onto the team. Let me take y'all back to the early part of the auditions in which... The girls were assessed from head to toe based on their look, their hair color, their skin tone and texture. As Kelly said, I'm like, does skin have a texture? I mean, it could, but like, I don't think she meant it the way she meant it, but it can kind of come off as like, we're going to be texturist against the dark skinned girls with the nappy hair. I'm just going to say what it is. The 4C girls will let go early or the girls with like curly hair were gone early, but they gave that one girl a makeover, made her a brunette. And then all of a sudden she got kicked off. That was some wicked work, y'all. 
like, have we not learned nothing from watching America's Next Top Model and giving people terrible makeovers and then sending them home? Now, we're going to talk about arbitrary judging. I'm just using this photo because I don't feel like going back and getting the other one from the early part of auditions in which they had like hairstylists, the boot maker. You had people who were like chefs and stuff judging the girls on how they dance. What? Paula Abdul was not available. Mary Murphy from So You Think You Can Dance. Get some dance crit. Get some people with dance credentials is what I'm saying. Now, let's talk about religious indoctrination. I'm using this random photo of Victoria because she's like in her influencer era, which is great. But uh, the praying, the we got to go to church because we don't have no family out there. It was kind of like giving cult energy. I did not like that at all. But Reese... And her like, Jesus is my best friend thing was like, whoa, I, it's a lot for me to handle because I'm like, you are just being a cheerleader. Let's just stick with the cheerleading girl. Now, this part right here, the ultimate ick factor was the tour of the Dallas Cowboys AT&T Stadium in which they brought these random men in there to look at the girls locker rooms and the stuff that they said in front of their photos gave very much like fapping material, if you know what I mean. I was uncomfortable, but this is what it is. This is how they allow these girls to be exploited, and I'm not with it. Victoria let them women play directly in her face because Kelly just does not like you. I'm glad you got a backbone by the end of the series, baby, because they didn't see it for you as a team leader or a um, a coach. Not a coach, but a, what do they call it? Like a captain. During the online audition process, did y'all catch that when there were girls that would jump on the screen who were looking a little bit outside of their little aesthetic that they got ready to critique them and then they would be like, no, she's just not our type. She's just not for us. I could just tell. It was very much given like, we want to say you're not skinny enough. You're not small enough. You're not slender enough. So when they try on the white shorts, the fact that they actually have a measurement system from belly button to the waistband is insane. But like literally, again, these women can do better, but they choose not to. But they were very much going to crush those girls' hopes and dreams by basically saying, you don't look like the part. But they wanted to be politically correct and not get too body shaming in a very outward way. But it was fine when the girls actually made the team and they could say things like, oh, she looks a little juicy today. Oh, she looks a little small today. Oh, her pants are not holding up well today. These girls probably have really good NDAs or some kind of clause where they can't talk about what really they experienced at the hands of the Darth Beckys that are Kelly and doggone Judy. And to some degree, Charlotte, which she only shows up like in little strategic areas of the docuseries, even though she is clearly the brand manager and she has a lot of wielding of authority and power that she can execute at certain times, just like. When they say, we think we have room for 37 on a the squad, they're like, nope, 36 is the geometric perfect like alignment for our different, for their different formations and for how they enter the field. I felt like if I'm going to get fired, definitely don't give me the Aja treatment and be like, you're beautiful, you're perfect, you look like a model, you look like Linda Evangelista, did you stone those tights yourself? Just fire me. Just send me packing. We regret to inform you, but you didn't make the squad is enough for me. Y'all play in these girls' faces. Tell them how good they are. You're tall. Your legs are perfect, but we can't use you now. You don't have enough sparkle. You don't have enough personality. Just, just let me go. Let me go gracefully. I'm going to give this series a B plus. All the strength of the women being able to tell their stories, to give us these wonderful kind of narratives about their life their health struggles and things that they go through on an individual level, their family life. I love that part of it. I, I think they gave very honest, forthcoming storytelling. Um, I could deal without the corporatism, <laughs> the obvious greed, um, the sexism, the misogyny, the things that are being upheld by other women who are bringing other women down because they want to be sour Susans for the rest of their life. And meet their authority over these young girls. Classism within the system of that as well. I noticed a lot of those girls who came down to Dallas are not doing well financially. The fact that the two sisters were living together in a studio apartment 
tells me everything I need to know. The young girl, Reese, who got engaged and her fiance is working at a auto parts store was very telling. But the stories themselves were good. The, the corporate HR aspect of it was very enlightening because, like I said, it was something that, to me, it needs to be studied at a conference or in a class, honey. And again, those issues tied to race, the hair, aesthetic, um, body image and stuff. We can learn a lot about being women and how we can be better girls, girls to each other, especially when women get in leadership authority, that we continue to like promote these things that are harmful for the sake of tradition. So I think I'm going to, again, I'm going to stick with my B plus rating. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Let's talk about it. I am Latrice Kelly. Please thumbs up my video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe for more and turn your notification bell on for the next time I upload some content for y'all. See you around and thank you for watching.